Hi, I'm Ralph Gable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. Today I'd like to give you a brief description of how to actually make measurements using an oscilloscope. Now, there is an assumption here that you are familiar with the controls of the oscilloscope and, and how those various controls affect uh, what you're looking at. If you are not familiar with that, I suggest you look at the first video in this, uh, in this pair here that talk about all of the various controls and shows you them on the, on the uh, oscilloscope so that you have a familiarity with what does what and how it affects what you see on the screen. So, with that, let's uh, go into how to look at a signal how to see a signal and, and make measurements on it using an oscilloscope. Okay, so let's talk about how to compensate your probe so that it measures things the way it should. In my case, I have a probe that can be either a times one or a times ten. And if I'm going to use it in the times 10 position, then I need to adjust the compensation so that it operates properly with my scope. To do that, I use the scope cal output. Now, notice it is a 5 volt output, and I have it set up for 1 kilohertz. So let's connect up our scope probe to this. All right, so now my scope probe is connected up to my calibration output. I am expecting a 5 volt 1 kilohertz signal on the screen. And this is what it looks like. Whoa, it's kind of saggy. It's supposed to be a nice square square wave. So to fix that, right on the side of the of the probe right here is a little hole and this is a plastic non-inductive do what's it thingy for tweaking it. And watch what happens when I turn this. Notice it sags or it gets really peaky. And so what you're trying to do is make that as square and flat as you can possibly do. Now it's also supposed to be a 5 volt signal. In the case of this oscilloscope I can actually adjust the front end gain of my scope. So if I come down here and I adjust that for just there, and then I go up to the top, I have one, two, three, four, five, and look at that. It's right on that fifth radical. If it wasn't, in the case of this scope, I could actually put my little tweak in here and adjust the gain of the front end of the scope so that it was. So now my scope probe is uh, properly compensated to work accurately with this scope. Right now that we've had the tour of the various oscilloscopes and you're uh, reasonably familiar with the uh, basic operation of them and what the controls do, let's talk about actually making a measurement with an oscilloscope. And the first step is having an idea of what you are going to be measuring. What is the voltage going to be? Because that will determine your volts per division. Are you using a times 10 probe or are you using a times 1 probe or are you connecting directly up? That also makes a difference with the volts per division. And then have an idea of the frequency that this signal is going to be. Is it an audio signal? Is it an RF signal? Uh, if it's an audio signal, then you know that whatever you're looking at is going to be below 20 kilohertz. Uh, in fact, if it's speech, if it's something like I'm speaking to you with, then chances are 5 kilohertz is going to be pretty, pretty high 
for for that particular range. Uh, if it's an RF signal, you know, is it? I mean, RF is a huge range of, of frequencies. Well, kind of get an idea of what you're talking about. Is it one megahertz? Is it 10 megahertz? Uh, that makes a difference in the the time per division that you choose, uh, and then you know triggering. Uh, a lot of that will determine is determined by exactly what you're trying to look at and how you're looking at it. But uh, if you're looking at a square wave, for instance, uh, as opposed to a sine wave. Uh, you know, slope makes a big difference in your triggering as to what you see, as well as the level and, and, and all of that. Uh, are you going to be uh, triggering off of some external source? You know, is something else going to be telling the trace to start so that you can see it? So these are the kinds of questions you have to ask yourself in preparing to make the measurement. So. Let's just say, uh, for instance, I'm going to measure a signal that I anticipate is going to be a one megahertz signal, and it is going to be one volt peak to peak. Okay, so peak to peak means that as the signal comes up, the very maximum that it can attain up here to the very minimum that it can attain down here, there's one volt between top and bottom. And in this case, it's an, it is not writing any kind of a DC level. So it's just a nice sine wave, one megahertz peak to peak. Okay, so one megahertz, I know, is, has a period of one microsecond. And I want to make that as big as I can on the screen. And uh, my, my old boat anchor oscilloscope has only 10 divisions on the screen. So if I choose one microsecond per division, that means that for every division on the screen, there will be one sine wave. So my old boat anchor, that will give me 10, 10 cycles across the screen. Well, I wanna see one. Well, how is that going to happen? Well, I have to speed up the, the trace. So if I use, uh, let's say, point two microseconds per division, then with point two micro, or excuse me, with point one microsecond per, per division, I will get the full width of the screen. With point two, I'll get half the screen. With point five, I'll get two divisions per cycle. And so because I want to see as much as I can, I'm going to start with the 0.2 microseconds per division because I'm only guessing that it's one megahertz. So that will give me two cycles on the screen. And then I know that, uh, or I think my signal is going to be one volt peak to peak. And my screen has a total of eight divisions. So if I have one volt per division, then it's only going to wiggle one. Well, if I use uh, 0.5 volts per division, well, now it's going to wiggle two. If I use 0.2 volts division, then it'll wiggle five divisions, and that feels about right. So that's where I'm going to start out with on my measuring my one megahertz signal. So let's uh, actually do this on the oscilloscope. Okay, so I have my signal generator set up to provide a nice one megahertz sine wave signal at one volt peak to peak. And remember I said that a one megahertz had a period of one microsecond. That's one divided by one million is one microsecond. And you notice just for giggles here, I set my time per division right here at one microsecond per division. And just for giggles, I set my voltage per division at one volt per division with a times one probe. And now you'll notice here that, look at that, 
Each division gets its own sine wave. Well, I want to get a much better look at that, so I'm going to speed this up. Let's go to 0.5 microseconds per division. And you notice now with 0.5 microseconds per division, we are doing two divisions per cycle. And if I speed this up even more, now I have 0.2 microseconds per division. So there should be five divisions per cycle. Let's get this set up right. So you see our trace is starting right there. And you notice it's crossing right there. But wow, you know, still can't see very much. It's, it's, it's too squished. So I'm going to increase or de uh, decrease the volts per division to 0.5. Now you notice with 0.5 that it's exactly two divisions tall. Well, let's make it even bigger. 0.2 volts per division. Now it is five divisions tall. And you say, well, how do I see that? Well, this is where your vertical position comes in, in handy, vertical and horizontal. So if I wanted to measure the voltage of this, what I would do is I would come down here to the bottom and I would use my vertical position to just get that trace right on that nice division mark. And you say, well, wow, that's sitting out in the middle of nowhere. Well, that's where the horizontal position comes in. And I slide this over here like this. So I got the bottom end down here right on that trace. I got the top end right up here on where I have the nice vertical graticals to work with. And now I count one, two, three, four, Four. Now the, each of these is 0 0.2, so that's 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 0.7 divisions. And then you multiply that by your 0 0.2 volts per division. And then that gives you your voltage reading on the oscilloscope. Now, if you wanted to measure the, the uh, period of this, again, we, we play with our vertical and horizontal. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to position that first guy right as close to that gradical as I can. And then I'm going to come over here and look for the next crossing. So we got one, two, three, four, five. Now this is where you use your calibrated eyeball. Because you notice it's not exactly halfway through. So it's not 5.1, but my calibrated eyeball says it's 5.05 .05 divisions. So we take 5.05 .05 divisions, we multiply it by 0.2 microseconds per division, and then that gives us the time between that point and this point. And if you want to know the frequency, because this is the full period of this, you divide 1 by that number, and then you'll get the actual frequency as measured by the old boat anchor. So there you have it. Now you know how to make measurement with an oscilloscope. I hope this was helpful. Take care, toodaloots, and thanks for watching.